Greetings, this is Darvan and welcome to a new Let's Play for the channel. This is Mordor Depths of Dajinal. No, this is not set in uh, Lord of the Rings. Mordor is just a random name that apparently... Well, I don't know how random it is, but it's not. Let's just say it's not Lord of the Rings. Uh, this game was released in 1995. It's an old school dungeon crawler. Um, unfortunately, it's native to Windows and with the advancements in architecture, it does not run under Windows 10. So in order to get this, I am having to emulate a DOSBox running Windows 3.1 running Mordor. So yeah, I'm basically, we're win run Windows within Windows. And I'm hoping this is going to record. I've had lots of issues. There's not going to be any sound effects, just the music. Um, there may be a bit of lag, I'm not sure. I mean, I've had to uh, cobble this setup together. Been a bit of a potch. No um, GOG doing Mordor for this time. But, never mind. Okay, this was back in the days when uh, you could have, you would have probably a single PC for a household with multiple people playing it. So there is a very social aspect to the game. You start off with nothing. Um, you have to explore, but everything that any character does impacts the game. This means that if a uh, another character or another party finds something and brings it back and sells it it might be available for sale for your character and vice versa uh, the furthest people into the dungeon and it is a big dungeon I'll tell you that and it's no slouch the um, then it gets added so I mean, we've, we're starting nothing. This is a clean install because I made an original install. In fact, this was so awkward that I had to get a, I had to get the current owner of Mordor because it's been sold on so, since this to send me an unpacked copy because the installers and the and the setup and the extraction things did not run under either Windows. 10 or Windows 3.1 so I couldn't do either but I've got it all kind of sus now I think fingers crossed so we're not going to go through the help lesson we are going to go we've got two choices create character and load a character but we don't have any characters there's no characters so we're going to create a character now our first character is basically going to be the groundbreaking one. So if we look through and decide, let's see, we've got various races. Um, they've all got their strengths and weaknesses. We'll probably go through them all as we create various characters. But for now, we're going to be human because a human has two advantages. One, it is a really, really easy to advance you've got no you've got no um you've got no resistances but you can advance you have the option of being in every class and it is extremely quick to advance in those classes so we are no man let's see what we got uh warrior paladin ninja now the one nomad, everyone starts as a nomad. I don't think it makes a difference if we're male or female, so we'll just stick with male. Uh, the ones that are in italics are the ones we can't have because of our alignment. So we can't be a paladin if we're good. If we're evil. I mean, we can only be a paladin because we're good. We can only be a villain if we're evil. And we can only be a healer and a thief if we're neutral but we can no longer be a mage or a ninja and the thing is if you've got all of these are locked by stats if you've got a good, the stats you can join any of these classes 
and you can multi-class. However, you only advance one class or guild at a time. We are actually just going to, let's have a look, what can we do? Um, the Nomad is a very, very basic class, but it's also the fastest to advance. You need so little. So what we're gonna do, I think, well, Charisma is basically, unless you need it, it's a dump stat, so we'll get rid of that. We want hit points. So let's see, that's max charisma. Now, you can get items that increase your ability scores, and you can increase them to five over the race rule maximum. So let's see what we can do. Um, now you may be wondering why I've gone with us intelligence and wisdom of 10. Well, basically one of the main items, the oh, way to uh, increase your abilities is through tomes. But you can only use tomes if you have an intelligence and wisdom of 10. If you don't, they're no use. You are limited to potions until you can get your intelligence and wisdom of 10. So unless you can get a class that you want, it is recommended you have at least 10 in intelligence and wisdom and do whatever you can to avoid losing it. We are gonna go, you know what? Let's go, we're gonna go neutral. For now, we're not really. We're just going to be a neutral. We're just going to be a neutral. When it comes to party, neutral can go with everyone. You cannot have good characters and evil characters in the same party. But other than that, that's fine. Now we need a name. Okay. Now this is the hard part. So anyone wants to ping in with uh, a name and a class and whatnot. And yeah. I'll do, but for now we're going to go with various names that I use from... Okay, so we're going to start with Kring. Okay, Kring. His name is Kring Dolmi. Is basically... He's a, he's a horse nomad from the Elenium series by David Eddings, which uh, featured Sp Sparhawk the Pandian. Very good series of games, uh, series of books. Nothing ever made again. Very good, very good series of books. Um, yeah, we go with Kareem Domi. Now, the password. It's a bit weird to have a password, when, except when you think back that because it was ex this was game was designed expecting multiple players and multiple parties. The password is there so that you could choose who could who could access your character. If you didn't want anyone using your character, then you could enter a password. But for now, that's just kind of redundant. Are we using large fonts? No, this is, looks about right to me. We're not going to bother. So we've got various options. And... Um, what we're going to do is we are going to run Kring. Okay. This is a fairly good setup for us. As you can see, this is, we are Kring Domi. We have 15 of 15 hit points. Everybody starts with 15 of 15 hit points. That is not a lot of hit points. Okay. Got all sorts of bits, but what we need is the bank. We want to make sure to store your golden items. You can spend money from the from you can spend money from the bank. So doing that first is always good. Okay, we have these are our stats. We're age 16. We're alone. We've got no resistances. These are our character stats. We're basically getting 10 attack and attack defense which is basically how combat works attack adds your chance at 
attack, defend, add shield chance to defend. Basically, it's attack versus defense, whoever's hired, get the bonus, that sort of thing. Okay, guild. Well, we're only a member of the Nomad Guild, which gives us one fighting and one thieving, and no magical skill. In fact, our abilities are thieving, where you get free from Nomad, and we get seven perception from Nomad. Now, when it comes to guild abilities, your highest guild in each, um, you eat the highest ability from your guilds will things so they don't stack so if we were to become a thief which is the best at thieving skill the, our thieving abilities would replace our abilities from nomad so likewise if we get a critical hit and fighting fighting from warrior for example that sort of thing we look around there's just us got nothing in our buffers and the misc is, well, we'll come to that in a minute. Because we have, this is the guilds, and we're in a member of the Nomads Guild. So, now I want to show you this because this is funny for me, I think. You look, okay. Kringdomi, healthiest character is 17, today, today. 1,125 days ago. Crashland was appointed guildmaster. That was when this game was first run. That was when I first set up the save files. And then I've been, every time I've played and tested, I've restored the same set of save files because it gets reset when you install not. And like I said, I got a, I had to get an unpacked thing to basically it was new then, so it's, that's back in 19, uh, 20, uh, yeah, back in 2019. Our other guilds, well, we got, um, we can join all of these as long as we've got the stats. So say we wanted to be a warrior, we would need 14 strength. Uh, we've got everything else, we just need a 14 strength to become a warrior. Fair enough. Become a seeker. We need to increase our intelligence and wisdom to 13. And our dexterity to 13 to become a thief. Okay, our intelligence needs to go up to 12. And our dex would need to go up to 17 to become a scavenger. Okay, strength is okay. We would need more dexterity for a scavenger become a sorcerer yeah we need more intelligence and wisdom to become a wizard we need a lot of intelligence and wisdom plus extra dexterity and to become a healer again intelligence wisdom and dexterity so you can see the idea but everyone begins with a nomad and you don't need any re requirements and out of all these guilds the nomads are the f are pretty weak but they're also the fastest I mean, we only need 133 experience for level two as a, no as a human nomad, and that is quite fast. So, because our first, our first character is basically, he's the one that gets to go out and explore the first few rooms. So what we're gonna do, let's see what we got. We've got one spell, which is, Sanctuary spell, which we don't need because if we you cast Sanctuary, it takes you to the last place you set your Sanctuary. There are items of that, so every character has access to the set Sanctuary spell. But only a few characters get um, the chance to cast Sanctuary, and that's a high level spell, so we won't need to worry about it. We can have up to four companions if we find them. We don't tend to use companions not got a lot of we're not got a lot of gold 1500 is not a lot of gold you think it is it isn't it's enough to buy your basic items so what have we got uh i'm gonna put it over we all i always put it over here our general store you have well anything in bold is what we can use basically and as you can see armor 
Leather armor, yeah, but if you want chain mail, you're going to have to make some money. And in order to do that, we need to find and sell stuff. That's how you make your money. We can use whatever's in bold. Other than that, we can't. So let's start off with... Well, let's start off with our weapons. We have a bronze dagger. Okay, a bronze dagger. Does basic damage. It's one, so there's no modifier and gives us free attack. Everyone can use it. You need a strength of four and a dex of six. However, what's interesting is it's not class restricted, which means that as long as one of your classes can use it, anybody can use it. So we can always use a bronze dagger. Daggers can be used pretty much by anyone, as long as at least one of your guilds can use it. So it can be worthwhile keeping a dagger, keeping a dagger handy at some point if you can afford one. Uh, bronze sword, let's see. Bronze sword again, but it does 1.1, so it's like an extra 10% of damage. Slightly higher, not as many guilds can use a sword. Pine staff, everybody can use a staff. It's exactly the same as a bronze dagger. Except it is class restricted, and I'm not entirely sure why other than it being cheaper you would use a pine staff okay we have bronze mace bronze mace again one point one is basically a cheaper sword that can be used by even fewer people and bronze battle axe now bronze battle axe is 1.3 axe again fewer people but this time it does 1.3, so that's like 30% extra damage. And I don't know all the formulas, but for us, I'm gonna go with a sword and board fighter for my nomad. Cause we're gonna need a defense. For the little that it will help. So, I mean, it's random, you can die in the first room. There's no doing it, so we've got a mace. We're going to buy a mace, and we're going to keep that. Okay. Now, our armor. We've got leather armor, which is free defense. That's not bad. If a lot, if most people can use that. We can afford that. Now, we can use bronze chainmail, which gives us nine defense. But we get a minus one modifier to our decks. But and then there's plate mail, which gives us six to attack and nine, and gives us minus two to our decks, used by very few. But if when we get enough money for that, we will. So let's go with leather armor for now. Let's go wooden wooden shield. We don't have much choice there. Yeah, zero point three. No, but we can use it. Okay. Now, you get to like, we're gonna show you what a bronze shield is. A bronze shield gives us extra defense. But you'll see the allowed guilds and levels. Nomad can use it at level three. Warrior and a paladin can use it at four. Everyone else can, has to be level five before they can use the bronze shield. So, yeah. Leather cap, everyone can use it. Oh. Well, virtually everyone can use it. Trust me, you need as much defense as you can get. Copper helm. Now what's intriguing to me is the copper helm used by less people, but is exactly the same as every way as a leather cap. I don't know why. But for consistency, let's use it, because I like that. I mean, there's no benefit to use it. There's no disadvantage to using it. You know. So we'll look. Leather gloves. Plus free attack. Cloth coke. 
plus three defense. Okay, now we've got this bronze braces. Well, we have the UGNE. Basically, these are limited numbers. If it's you, it's unaligned because some items are unaligned. Potions can be unaligned, mostly stuff like that. Otherwise, you have to choose an alignment, and we're neutral. Um, which means most things won't have an if and we use anything that's aligned with good or evil they won't have an effect on us it's just a waste um, if you're good and you use something that's evil or vice versa it's act it actually becomes a cursed item and will provide a penalty rather than a thing so yeah but I wanted to show you this because it's like okay say we wanted to get our bronze braces you can use them, they're going to cost 73000 We don't have that sort of money. And that's because there's only one. If we, got, if we got more, or if we found more, then that might come down. And if we have a look, that gives us an extra free attack. The leather girdle's the same. It's a free attack, and it's a belt. We can afford leather boots. If it's just got a number here, then it's how much it costs. Out, right and boots again plus free attack there we go uh, potions say so, okay let's have a look see what these potions do We've got cure disease cure poison minor heal now we can use them okay so but they cost 66,000 so we're not gonna get we're not going to be able to buy a lot of stuff to begin with because the first thing we need to do is we need to start equipping uh, finding some money selling the first items bring it in because in general if we want to things to turn up in the general store for us to buy we need to sell them and then the economy goes well the economy goes bonkers really now I'm going to do something quickly. Just want to make sure. Got a bronze mace. That's our general weapon. Okay. Um, that's what we're going to be using. But it, like I said, it's worth carrying a dagger. And we've got enough to carry a dagger. It won't help us now. But it means if we change into something then we've got a dagger to fall back on well we'll leave it I mean yeah it's not really useful to get the dagger but you can see some rearranging here and this is where we put it let's see what you got okay so we'll equip a mace our armor windshield Copper helm, leather gloves, cloth coat, leather boots. Okay. Put all the gold in, it's always worth. If you've sold stuff, you get money, always put it in the bank. Um, yeah, this has been a long episode for we have lots of discussion. I'm gonna try and keep it to half hour hours, but the first thing is we need to get into the dungeon, so in we go and this is the dungeon we've got we know absolutely nothing there is nothing here for us to see because we've only just entered these their stairs up their stairs up and you've got the very small dungeon grid for you otherwise you fill in the auto map so i mean this is the first level i know this level like the back of my hand it's very random though and there's never anything in the first in this first room it gives it gives you that much of a chance but that's all you're gonna get I mean you can go through the door and die straight away there old school basically you'll do a lot of running in your early levels 
Well, the whole point is we want to level up. So let's pick a room. Let's do. Okay. We ain't messing around. We took hits. We're gonna run away. And we we rested. Now we've rested for it was six days for those hits that we took, which wasn't a lot to be honest. We literally went and we got some experience. We know there's a giant centipede in here. Okay, so that was our first room done. And that's the second room and we've already made a level. We lost our gold, but we made a level. Okay, so we banked the gold. What's important is we go and we make a level. There we go. Let's become level two. Gives us 22 hit points. Basically for the first, just to give you some idea, scout for the first 30 levels, your constitution bonus is added to your hits so yeah after that it, it decreased quite a bit I mean, similar to old school but that doesn't matter because we got what we wanted we've leveled up we're not going to be um, excessive by any means I mean I've done test playthroughs there literally I have died in the first room so, now if you look on this grid, this grid just show us where we are exploring. Uh, for other characters, or we feel that that will actually become solid. So we can tell what we've explored in what session. You can also right click and fill that in if I wanted to do so, but yeah. Okay, so we've rested for six days. We didn't get a lot of gold. We're taking it very slowly, but yeah. Now the reason for going slow, as I said, we're very fragile. It's just us. There can be a lot of monsters. You don't have any resistances and we don't have a lot of money. Luckily we're nice and young, unfortunately we've only got about, we only live for about a hundred years. And if it's taken us a week every time we go in and out, we could age up pretty fast. So, well, that's okay. Okay, we have, this is a treasure chest, well it's actually a box, it's not really much of a chest. This is where we find our items. It's not trapped, mostly you can find gold, sometimes you can find items in there. But yeah. Um, I mean, although it can take some grinding, you tend to find at the the, the in the first level. Yeah, there's lots of items to help you help you out. Well, relatively a lot once you've got a few levels behind your belt or a party. So, okay, the two unseen monsters hit us for 15. Yeah, we ain't taking that. Um, we've rested three weeks after that hit for, for that. Okay. Still haven't got a 
a lot of stuff though. Okay, so we've made a level because basically you get experience. I'll show you this. You get experience for killing monsters. But it's not just killing them, you also get experience if you damage them. So if you hit them but don't kill them, you get less damage, you get less experience, but you do get some. And as such, we didn't have to kill those monsters to make the level. You'll also know up here it says there we, we need now. 450 more more experience a pin. Well, you can only gain one level at uh, one level at a time. This is very much like old school D and D. Um, if you gain enough to get two levels, then you are capped to the experience one point less than you need to get your second level. So what will happen is that's where you stop. You can, if you get back, make a level. You'll level up. You'll need one experience point to get your next level. Okay, so but we can make a level, and we are nomad. Nomad level three. Okay. So we've got some. We've got we've got some hits behind us. Like I said, we would um, we're going to uh, do roughly half hour episodes. So if you like what you're seeing here, be sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment. Please consider sponsoring me on Patreon. And until next time, goodbye.